okay let's uh, continue so uh, in the last class we uh, saw how to realize the asynchronous logic and uh, make a self timed sar where is it yeah yeah so here again the idea is you uh, fire the comparator once detect when the comparison is done you wait for a short while and then you start the next comparison and the delay is essentially the delay required for the nand gate the extra delay you might have or sometimes you might not even require this and uh, the delay of the or gate that goes and reaches right and parallelly we store the data in flip flops and then switch this and uh, the important thing is i mean one of you had mentioned you can also use valid signal here for clocking that is fine but the point is you should make sure that after n conversions are over the comparator is reset once and for all and uh, that's why you need to have this mechanism and i got one other question after the class so why don't i have a counter the counts for n cycles and then resets the comparator after n cycles and if you look at this fellow this is actually a counter right this is basically i think probably is ring counter i don't know you start it starts with 000 100 110 110 and then 111 so this is basically a counter that counts and this goes high after the n cycle is over and you reset so you can do any kind of uh, combinations in this and do this and then we started to see what are the non idealities we can have and essentially we saw we can have i mean the only analog components are the switches and the capacitors this is all uh, digital so we saw if the switches have on resistance the uh, capacitor will not settle to the required reference voltage so which means we can have error if the input is close to the reference and the solution was to use redundancy you compare the input with the uh, what do you say the uh, pro problematic reference voltage is once again and this is a problem especially in the first few comparisons wherein you don't have a lot of time and i mean now you know if i give you a waiting scheme like this what is the condition for redundancy how to calculate how much redundancy you have and so on this simple uh, logic so now let's look at the second uh, possible issue we can have and here besides the switches you only have capacitors so let's see what is the problem with capacitors the problem is not with the capacitors themselves but it is the fact that we have so many capacitors used in our circuit and that results in a bunch of problems uh, the first is the following so you know that in an n bit sar let's say take a single ended case we have a capacitor c connected to vrf and then you have c 2c 4c so on if i have an n bit sar what will be the last capacitance 2 power n minus 1 times c right so what is the total capacitance i have here sum of all these by now i mean this geometric sum is 2 power n times c and if I, this is single ended in a differential also you have something similar in the positive half you have a total of 2 power n minus 1 times c in the negative half you have a total of 2 power n minus 1 c so the total is still this right now uh, remember in the first operation is sampling the input across this entire capacitor so i'm going to sample the input across this entire sampling capacitor cs which is basically the total capacitance i have let me call this as actually unit capacitance cu so that uh, we have some distinction now uh, this is basically a simple track and hold circuit right so in this track and hold how do we choose the capacitance value what sets the capacitance value can you tell me hmm uh, but i mean r on off switch is a separate design uh, you know like parameter itself right i mean frequency everything is determined by rc so i can just change r right but is there something that de uh, depends only on c noise. that noise right what is the noise uh, power kd by c so so remember when we sample the input we also have noise sampled and that noise power is just dependent on the capacitance so let's uh, try to do a simple calculation and see uh, what is the typical values we need let's say this spec i have is an effective in of of 10 bits so what is the maximum snd r i can achieve sinusoidal snd r 
let's say about 60 VB, right? So let's say the input is basically, oops, the maximum input I can have is like this, going from minus 1 to plus 1. If so, what is the maximum signal power I can have? Huh? Yeah, 1 by 2. In decibels, how much is this? Minus, minus. minus 3 dB. Okay. So, which means what can you say about the noise power in decibels? Minus 63 dB. Fine. Now, remember this noise power comprises of both the quantization noise and the sample thermal noise. Sum of both of them should be meeting this peak. So, which means now we can have three different ways in which we can distribute this total among these. Hmm? In one case, I can choose the quantization noise to be the dominant. In one case, I can choose the thermal noise to be the dominant or I can have roughly to be same amount. And uh, typically, let us say you want to keep the thermal noise to be uh, smaller, you will have to have a capacitance much larger than what you actually want that is stated by thermodynamics, right? And uh, remember if I were to have a smaller thermal noise, capacitance value will be larger, which means the previous stage will have to drive a larger capacitance. So what can you say about the power? It has to drive a larger capacitive load, so it is going to be higher. So typically with respect to power consumption, it makes sense to have the thermal noise to be the dominant factor. If you try to keep thermal noise to be smaller, Typically, the trade-off is the power will be higher. So, with respect to power, we try to uh, do this. Again, this is assuming that to reduce quantization noise, my power consumption will not increase so much. Right? In that case, this is what we typically do and let us say you do this now. And again, uh, my spec is to have an enob of 10 bits. And I am uh, choosing so that the entire noise is dominated by the thermal noise. So which means what can you say about the signal to quantization noise ratio? Huh? Yeah, I mean this is a, I mean this is a total SNR but with respect to only the quantization noise what is the SQNR I should have? It should be more than 60 dB because I am keeping the quantization noise much smaller. So let us say I keep it so that uh, that is about 70 dB or something. So that basically means I will have to design a 12 bits are essentially okay. So that the SQNR is about 70, 72 dB and then I will eventually choose the capacitance so that the thermal noise KT by C is right. This is one way in which we can do right. Let us see what happens. So which means what I am saying is. I am going to choose my KT by CS to be equal to this, right? Because quantization noise I have assumed to be much smaller than that. So it is minus 63 dB. In absolute scale, what is that? 10 power what? Minus 6.3. Right? So let us do a uh, back of them calculation. So CS is essentially KT by this, KS Boltzmann constant. This is at room temperature 300 Kelvin and 10 power minus 6.3. Let us just do order of the, I mean like some basic order calculation. So let us say this is 10 power minus 23, this is 100, this is 10 power minus 6. Simple approximations. So what does it evaluate to? Ah, that is basically 1 femtofarad. So with respect to having a thermal noise of so much, it is enough for me to have a total sampling capacitance of 1 femtofarad, but in a SAR ADC, the total sampling capacitance is 2 power n times the unit capacitance, right? So which means 2 power n and uh, how much, how many bits I will design this SAR for? 12 bits, so that is about 2 power 12 times Cu is 1 femtofarad. So what is the unit capacitance? It is 1 femto by 2 power 12. What is 2 power 10? 2 power 10 is roughly 1000. So it's basically about one atom per thousand times small. So now you see that the unit capacitance you need is so small, and I mean it doesn't take anyone to guess. It's not possible to realize such a small capacitor on chip. Right? So uh, in practice, you will have some minimum possible capacitance you can realize that might change with process. 
so uh, you will have some semen let us say I will say here so you will have to choose the unit capacitance to be at least this so this is so it says the unit capacitance and I am giving an example let us say the unit capa I mean the minimum capacitance you can realize is about 1 femtofarad so which means uh, what will happen to the total sampling capacitance I will need. This is basically Cu. So this is 2 power n times uh, this 1 femtofarad. What is this roughly? Yeah, I mean basically yeah, it is uh, exactly about 4 picofarad. So now you see that my thermodynamic states, it is enough for me to use a total sampling capacitance of 1 femtofarad. But this as such would have been okay. But in a SAR ADC, because of the fact that we are distributing the capacitors in this fashion, the minimum capacitance I need becomes so small that it is practically not possible. So you end up choosing a larger unit capacitance. So even the sampling capacitance is, you see it is 3 orders of magnitude larger. Okay. So which means in a SAR ADC do you think, uh, I mean do you, in SAR ADC which of the 3 regimes do you think we will be designing? Yeah, now you see that you will anyways have to use a really large sampling capacitor. So it is easy to keep KT by C really small. So most of the practical SAR ADC designs will operate in this region. So then yeah, in this case you can choose enough to be 10 bits, right? Yeah. So if it chooses my quantization noise is the dominant, so SQNR can be just 60 dB. You can design a 10 bit. Okay. But yeah, I mean one thing is sure we will have to keep the quantization noise to be the dominant. But uh, here you see that the capacitance you, you require, uh, use is 3 orders of magnitude larger, right. So let us at least see if we can uh, reduce the amount, I mean let us see, let us see if we can come up with a case wherein I do not have to use such a large capacitance than what is needed. I will have to use larger but let us see if we can reduce it to some extent. And this problem here is happening because right now the maximum to minimum capacitance ratio is really large right so let's see if we can reduce it and for that let me take a 6 bit sar as an example so we reducing capacitance then because the quantization noise is dominant correct so we did help uh, i didn't follow quantization noise is dominant than thermal noise correct so even if we try to reduce the capacitance we try to increase the thermal noise yeah, but the thing is, see, uh, uh, thermal noise will be much smaller, right? What I am saying is, I mean, here in this case, it is 1000 times smaller. Do, do I want to keep it 1000 times smaller or 10 times smaller? Right? Will that help? No, no, the thing is, if you, if you, let us, with respect to the total noise, it will not help. But at least with respect to the capacitance load, the previous stage has to drive. I mean, there is no reason to use a really large capacitor than what is required. Right? So uh, my goal is to see, I mean, I am sure I will be using a capacitance greater than 1 femto, but ca can this be 100 femto, right? Even 100 femto is working, but as of now it looks like I need to use 1 4 pico. So let us see if we can reduce this stump. Let us see thought process. So let us say 6 bit uh, SAR we take, what will be the maximum capacitance I will have? Total capacitance is 2 power n times c, so the MSB capacitance will be, this is 32 times c, so the next capacitance will be, write it quickly, next is 16 times c, next is uh, 8c, next is 4c, And you have this capacitor C always connected to VRF in the switching scheme that we saw. So I will have something like this. Right? So the total capacitance I have is basically 64C and the max to the minimum capacitance ratio, how much is this? How much is max to min? Right? Cool. 
So now let us say uh, I want to reduce this ratio. So I am trying to see if I can use a smaller value for the Cmax. So let us say I uh, decide that I will only use a maximum capacitance of 4C here. So which means what will be the next capacitance? You see, next one will be, next should be what? Yeah, C by 2, C by 4, C by 8 and right. This is what let us say I want to do, okay. So uh, what I will do, let me just copy this. Let me erase this now and this is what I want to do. Oops. But let us say the uh, minimum capacitance I can have is just C, okay. So which means anything smaller than this I can't realize. Do this. So which means uh, till this point is when I can pro pro uh, properly realize, right. So this corresponds to how many bits of SAR resolution, if I just use these 3, it is a 3 bit. So let us say as of now I, I know I can make a 3 bit SAR, right. So that is basically 4C, 2C, C and C. So, uh, I have one 3 bits are which I can realize now. Totally I need 6 bits. So let us say I have one more 3 bits are. Now we have two 3 bit capacitive DACs. What is the natural question to ponder about? I want to get 6 bit. I have two 3 bit DACs. So what is the natural question you can ask? Can is it possible to combine these two to get a 6 bit? Right? So which means, remember already I have a 3 bit here, okay, so let me erase this, sorry. The question is I already have one 3 bit here, instead of using this portion, can I use this 3 bit then? That is the question I am trying to ask, fine. So let me again have a copy of this. Ah. Ah, it's a good question. So he's suggesting why don't I do this to see? This is fine for C by two, but let us say you know, doing a you know like uh, ten bit this you require C by one twenty eight or something. Putting one twenty eight is uh, not area efficient. Plus again, uh, when I, whenever you do this, there's going to be a parasitic capacitor here, so that will kind of limit. But if it just you just are I mean you just want to realize one C by two, you could do it. So now let me, uh, can you tell me what is the effective capacitance I see here? It's 18 plus 18, 14, this is basically C. But what is the effective capacitance I see uh, in this case? 8 times C, right? So basically if I want to get rid of this portion and use this, I can't directly go and connect these two, right? Because earlier the total capacitance to the right was C, right now it is 8 times C. So uh, here I have a total of 8 times C, but looking in I want to have a smaller capacitance. What can I put in between? Hmm? I have a capacitance of 8C, I want to reduce it so that the equivalent capacitance is C. What is the simplest way to reduce a capacitor? You put another capacitor in series, so that is what we will try to do. So let us say you put another capacitor in series. Yep. So let us say this is some CB. So we can find what is the capacitance you need. So uh, CB and HC are in series. What should this be equal to? So we can simplify this and work out this will turn out to be 8 by 7. So basically which means if I go and put 8 by 7 times C here, then this, oops, then this entire structure here will mimic this one.
again i leave that as an exercise you can actually go and work out the charge conservation and see so ideally now we just have to do this give this to a comparator and basically uh, switch these capacitors to vrf or ground nothing changes so i'll give it as a problem so that you work out and check if the voltage you get is corresponding to a 6 bit sars that way you'll get a you know a hang of solving these problems so now basically you can generalize this Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. This is basically I've taken a single-ended case. So now we can generalize this technique. Uh, now let us say I have an n one bit sar. I mean n one bit capacitive duct and an n two bit capacitive duct. I can, in principle, go and put a capacitor so that effectively it behaves like. an n1 plus n2 bit capacitive duct and uh, if i had a 3 bit duct here the capacitance i used was 8 by 7c if i use an n2 bit duct what will be this value nothing that's all okay so again you it's a new technique uh, you give it a name and this is commonly referred to as the split c duct and this capacitor is often called as the bridge capacitor now i mean the issue with this technique is the capacitance required in the bridging side is 8 by 7 times c it is a non integer factor of the unit capacitor so typically if you have a unit capacitance of c you can reliably implement integer multiples of it right if i want let us say 3 uh, times c what will you do i have a capacitance of c if i want to exactly get 3 times c what is the simplest way you can do that you put three of them in parallel that will guarantee that you have 3 times c but if it's 8 by 7 times c it is not easy to realize so that's the main issue with this but otherwise you see that when i do this now what is the total capacitance i have in the 6 bit i have 4 2 8 so it's basically 8 times c the total capacitance is now reduced and even the max to min ratio is basically reduced by a factor of 8 so that is one nice advantage which means you can use a total sampling capacitance which is still larger than what is dictated by kt by c limit but it need not be three orders of magnitude larger so idea fine so yeah now uh, yeah so yeah, so basically in practice we uh, operate in this range wherein with this split seed up technique hopefully we don't have to use three orders of magnitude larger capacitor we can use slightly uh, smaller capacitor and in practice i told you that we'll have a minimum realizable capacitance we can choose a unit capacitance to be this but uh, there is another issue that sets a limit on the unit capacitance that is what we'll look at next